So, good morning, everyone. I'm Carrie Buchanan. I manage the BRIAM Community Scheme at BRE. I'm going to tell you a little bit about just the structure of the scheme, its contents, what it's, it's aiming to deliver, and then also touch a little bit on what, what drove the development of the scheme. Where did it come from? What's it trying to address and deliver in terms of sustainability within the master planning system? So, first of all, I'm, I'm sure pretty much the majority of the room is familiar with BRIAM. Probably most of you are familiar with BRIAM New Construction, uh, our scheme for the design and construction of individual commercial buildings. So just to show you where BRIAM Community sits in relation to that scheme, BRIAM Communities operates on a much higher level and much earlier on in the uh, life cycle stages of development. So it really integrates in the earliest possible uh, planning stage and it's covering this site-wide um, site-wide approach to delivering more sustainable development the idea being that if we really integrate sustainability into the master planning process as early as possible uh, then any individual buildings on that site will subsequently uh, benefit from that in terms of sustainability so just to give you a few overarching statements of what Bream Communities is and, and what it tries to drive. So it is a, a standard to improve the design of large scale development. Now, we don't actually define what we mean by large scale development uh, because the impact of development can vary hugely depending on its location. And so we tend to make the decision as to whether Bream Communities is appropriate on that local context rather than setting upper or lower size thresholds. Uh, the standard uh, or the scheme is holistic in its nature. It addresses the social, economic and environmental aspects of sustainability. And arguably, there's more opportunity for addressing aspects of social and economic sustainability when we're looking at this broader scale early on in the master planning process versus the opportunity at the individual building level. Okay. And one of the key bits uh, of feedback we've had on the scheme to date has been the value that an independent certification scheme plays in terms of bringing all those stakeholders on board, uh, getting collaboration, making sure that the consultation process is as smooth as possible, and making sure people buy into the vision in terms of sustainability for the site. It's not always easy, uh, but there is a role that this independent certification can play in that. So just to touch on a little bit in terms of who, what and where the scheme can be used. So in a number of cases, we have uh, local authorities requiring the use of green communities. But actually, in the majority of cases, uh, both in the UK and internationally, the scheme is being driven by independent uptake uh, from developers where they see the value the scheme can play in terms of supporting their vision for sustainability. We've also had uh, or been approached by a number of neighbourhood planning groups who, to be quite honest, just don't know where to start in terms of how to uh, address sustainability within their neighbourhood plan. And they see the Broome Community Scheme as a, a framework that they can lean on in terms of ensuring key aspects have been addressed in the neighbourhood plan they're, they're proposing for the area. So, of course, you'd expect that a sustainability scheme supports mixed-use development, but the scheme can also be used on purely housing uh, or, indeed, purely commercial uh, developments, and we've had experience of, of both. So, I think one of the big misconceptions about the scheme is that it's used purely on you know, brand new development um, and actually not suitable for regeneration brownfield development. And that's just not the case. And uh, hopefully you'll see that by the end, end of the presentation. And just to, to briefly mention, I know the focus of, of today is, is UK um, planning system, but the scheme is applied internationally. And so there is value in terms of the certification and how that gives international comparability of the sustainability achieved on site. So just to give you an, an overview of the, the content of the BRIAM Community Scheme, you'll see that the, the first technical category we have there is governance. And the assessment issues that, that fall under this category have a big focus on, on consultation, bringing everyone on board with the vision for the master planning process. 
The second category there, social and economic well-being. This is pretty broad. Uh, we look at the economic impact of the development throughout this category. We also look at things like green infrastructure, particularly important for uh, regeneration uh, brownfield sites. We also look at aspects of local vernacular and how the development can complement and integrate within the surrounding environment. Resources and energy, pretty self-explanatory. Here we're looking at the energy strategy for the site, but we're also uh, looking at how we can make use of any existing buildings and infrastructure on site, how we can maximize the opportunity for refurbishing or reusing any uh, materials or buildings on site throughout the, the construction process. Again, land use and ecology, pretty self-explanatory. Here we're looking at what ecology may exist on site, what we can do to preserve that, and opportunities to enhance that. But we also address aspects of contamination of the site and how to appropriately remediate that, another particular challenge for a number of brownfield sites. And then finally, transport and movement. Of course, we're trying to promote more sustainable forms of transport, but we also recognize that a number of these regeneration brownfield sites are key sites in terms of connecting different areas of our urban environment. And so it's not just about the sustainable transport delivered on site, it's also how that development links to the surrounding area and integrates with the surrounding area in terms of transport and uh, pedestrian routes. So just a couple of slides now to uh, show you some high-level things that Bring Communities is trying to, to address. So one of the key uh, aims of the scheme, and very important for brownfield regeneration, is to ensure that as we master plan these sites, that they don't become islands, that they are well integrated within the surrounding area, that they do acknowledge the context in which they're, they're being master planned. Then, as I've mentioned, we want to encourage the use of uh, previously developed or contaminated land. Uh, we want to encourage the reuse of, of materials uh, on the site uh, to try and make sure that the, the, econ or, sorry, the environmental impact is not as large as it could be. So this is an example of, of Malmo in Sweden. They had quite an extensive existing infrastructure on site, and there was a lot that was done in this project in terms of ensuring that existing infrastructure was maintained to try and reduce that environmental impact. A very uh, basic example of how user experience can be completely different to what we plan. Um, very important that we understand who we're planning for, what their needs are, what the focal points within a development are, and how we can best link so that we don't end up with situations like this where users are completely on a different level to how we planned. And again, equally important, uh, a number of, of brownfield sites have history, <laughs> you know, they have existing um, characteristics that, that we should, uh, in a large majority of cases, look to complement, if possible. And so there is a focus within the scheme of acknowledging what the local character is in the area and trying to ensure that that carries through the master planning process, be that in a residential development or in a commercial development. And the scheme is designed to complement the master planning process. It's not designed to add a huge extra burden. I was just having a conversation with some of our assessors who are in the room today that actually the scheme is most successful when it is well and truly integrated from the early stages and people embrace what it's trying to deliver. It's not there to create a whole load of extra work for the team. It's there to try and support the master planning process. And that's true right from the very strategic level, addressing what the opportunities and constraints are for the site, right down to the detailed level in terms of looking at the types of materials that we use in the public realm, for example. Just another point that the scheme is flexible to the phasing of developments. We, we recognize that very rarely do developments get built out all in, in one go. And so we want to make sure that it can be applied to this phased approach to development. So another uh, very important element of the scheme, which I've touched on already, is consultation. 
Uh, the scheme right from the very start has a focus on this element of consultation and not just with those occupying the site currently, also with those uh, businesses on site and in the surrounding areas. We want to make sure that any regeneration, any brownfield regeneration really complements what's there already and builds, builds in terms of the opportunity that's delivered. So there's a thread of consultation throughout the scheme. We also look at the local demographic needs and priorities to make sure what's provided on site in terms of amenities and facilities is suitable for who is going to occupy that particular development. And just to make uh, the point again that it's not about a whole load of rework. We acknowledge the processes that already exist in terms of uh, master planning. We build on those and we try and look at opportunities to further uh, increase the sustainability of the site. And I think one of the, the common misconceptions about, about Bream um, and indeed Bream communities is that our primary aim is to, to address um, climate change. Uh, to address environmental aspects of sustainability. But just to use the example of the, the transport uh, section of the scheme, of course we're trying to promote more sustainable forms of transport, but throughout the section we also address elements of health and well-being. Through promoting more sustainable transport, we have an impact on air quality, for example. We have an impact on noise. We also have an impact on the level of activity within the development by promoting more walkable communities and also cycle infrastructure, for example. And in terms of the economic aspect, transport can have a, a huge impact on that. We all, we all know that. Um, but well-designed and well-laid out uh, street space within developments can really promote footfall to the most appropriate areas of development and the surrounding area. So those of you who have ever uh, had the pleasure of looking at a Briam manual may recognize this particular diagram. It just highlights the opportunity for sustainability, the green line at the top, and the cost associated with integrating sustainability into the process. Along the bottom, we have the different life cycle stages of development. So you can see that the earlier sustainability is considered, the more opportunity there is to integrate it, and hopefully the less costly it is when it's integrated in early on. If we then extend that to the master planning phase of development, there's even greater opportunity for integrating sustainability. Economies of scale come into play. We look at site-wide strategies rather than strategies for individual buildings. And so there's a, there is a huge opportunity to successfully integrate sustainability from the earliest possible stages. Okay, just uh, to finish up, I'm going to touch on a couple of experiences, both from a local authority perspective, but also from a developer perspective of, of using the Briam Community Scheme. So Eastleigh are, are one of the local authorities that require Briam Communities for super major developments. They define super major developments as over 100 units or over 10,000 square meters. So Eastley have a number of sites that are actively going through the certification process. Um, mixed feedback, uh, all useful. Some have engaged right at the earliest point, others a bit later in the process. Um, but what we've seen and what we've heard from, from Eastley is that actually Briam Communities has greatly helped their planning team in terms of giving them confidence of what's been achieved on these sites in terms of sustainability and also in terms of them processing applications Applications. So we just heard about the uncertainty of who will be responsible for processing our applications and what exactly the criteria will be. But in this case, Briam Communities has added a level of um, certainty and assurance to that process in terms of the developer being able to demonstrate what exactly they will deliver on site. And just to give you a, a quick example of a, a brownfield regeneration site in Derby that has been certified against Bream Communities, this site was not an easy one in terms of sustainability. There was no getting away from that. It was hugely constrained by the train line along the top of the site and also by a significant road 
network along the bottom half of the site. It had huge challenges in terms of contamination on site, and we thought this is going to be a pretty difficult project. They're, they're going to really uh, struggle to get sustainability properly integrated into this process, but actually, the developer took the call to use Briam Communities right from, from the outset. Um, we're not saying that it solved every single issue, but it certainly provided them with a framework through which they could work through different aspects of sustainability. And it gave them and the local authority assurance in terms of how sustainability was being addressed. Their uh, commitment to using the scheme helped them win the bid for the site initially. So right from the outset, there were positives for the developer in terms of engaging with the scheme. So just a, a final note from uh, Dave Bullock, who is the managing director uh, of Compendium, uh, sorry, Compendium Living, uh, who delivered the site and will be continuing to deliver the site over the next 10 to 15 years. Um, he viewed the process as cost neutral, but the biggest value it had was in terms of smoothing out that planning process and engaging the, the right people at the right time throughout that process. So just to, to finish up, um, there are plenty of, of resources online, including a, a video from Dave Bullock, uh, the, the guy we just saw the quote from, sharing his experiences of how the scheme has helped deliver more sustainable development on brownfield sites. Thank you. <laughs>